Okay, this is gonna be hard to believe, but as a kid, I wasn't really that much of a Spider-Man fan. I was born in 1996, so I was pretty much a toddler for most of the 1990s. And during that period, I was more of a Batman fan. The Spider-Man animated series never grabbed me in the way that the Batman animated series did. I was too young to really appreciate Spider-Man comic books. Obviously, the movie rolled around in 2002, but in the UK, it was a 12. So I didn't get to see it until it came out on VHS, and my reaction was, eh. Too much Peter Parker, not enough Spider-Man. Which is a crazy thing, because that is now one of my favourite movies of all time. But as a kid, I spent most of the film's first half just playing with my Spider-Man action figure, and that was it for me. The Spider-Man action figure was the main thing that made me like Spider-Man. As far as I was concerned, Spider-Man was just my favourite action figure. But then the following year, I get home from school and my dad has a surprise for me. He's bought me a Spider-Man video game. And I was thrilled with this little surprise, so I popped it in and started playing immediately. Now, as a kid, I had no clue as to the stigma of licensed video games. Like, most of my games at that age were licensed games. And when I was that age, I don't know what my standards were like, but I do recall never playing a game that I didn't like. But it wasn't just that I liked Spider-Man the video game. I actually loved this game. And this was the piece of Spider-Man media that made me a Spider-Man fan. Now there's a lot of fantastic things that can be said about Spider-Man 2000. The fact that this was Spider-Man's very first 3D video game release and it was a big deal was something that flew over my head as a kid, but the fact is this is an incredibly refined experience and is a lot of fun by today's standards. There's really not much of a learning curve to this game. Spider-Man 2000 is a platforming game first and foremost, with challenges and puzzles sprinkled between. Levels can be a matter of getting from A to B, or it can be that you're trying to stop a bomb from going off, rescuing civilians, shutting down generators. There's a lot of variety and it feels like an incredibly high stakes game. Spidey himself felt intuitive. As I say, this is a pretty simple version of Spider-Man to play as. So it's kind of a platforming game first and foremost and a Spider-Man simulator second. Like, this game doesn't really make you feel like Spider-Man in retrospect, but at the same time this wasn't expected back then. And also, I was a kid, so as far as I was concerned, I basically was Spider-Man while I was playing this. In a very simple, straightforward way, you can do the basics of what Spider-Man can do. He's got his super strength, so he can lift things like cars. He can deal a good deal of damage with his hits. He can jump pretty high. There's honestly a surprising variety of what you can do with his webs, which can be used for tying up thugs or just knocking them out completely if you feel like it. And the most thrilling part was that Spider-Man could also web swing. It was pretty much automatic, just jump up and then he will start swinging. And it is effectively flying, but with a fancy web swing animation just to cover that up. But it's a feist, and you could change his height level and slow him down. This was a whole lot more than just the bare minimum. Of course, though, web is limited, so you do want to keep topping up your web cartridges as you go. Unless you play the game in kid mode, when you don't really have to worry about that. And let me just say, kid mode was a great thing for me as a kid, because things that I wouldn't have the patience for back then, such as grinding for web supplies, and making certain combos essential for the game. These were not things that my progression-obsessed, impatient kid self had to worry about. But one thing I really enjoyed collecting were the different power-ups. Firewebs, the old trusty Spidey armor. These did make the little bits of exploration I did as a kid more rewarding. And then there is the presentation of the game. Now, as a kid, I played this on the Mac and the graphics on the Mac and PC versions of this game are definitely the superior editions. Spider-Man looks as you would expect, red and blue and clad with webs. And those graphics, while they are definitely a product of their time, they were colourful and exciting enough to keep me engaged as a kid. It's one of those things where the cinematography is good enough to kind of elevate the rest of the graphics. There's a lot of really good art design in this game. The environments are stimulating and immersive. The characters all look as you would expect them to look. But I know that the version of this game that most people played was the PlayStation 1 version, and that's quite a different story. Look at Spidey! He's got no webs! You poor webless bitch! And then of course there's- ah! What the fuck did they do to Black Cat? 
It's funny to think that this crazy sexualized femme fatale character from the comics who people lust after looks like fucking Gollum in this game. Boy am I glad I played the Mac version with its improved graphics. Weird flex, but okay. As for the music, as a kid I was bopping out to this stuff, but today it's very compressed. That doesn't take away from how good this music is, but man, I wish there were HD versions of this. The things I would do for remastered editions, it's enough to make, make me, me kill a man. man. But then what is it that makes this game such a perfect introduction for newcomers to Spider-Man? It is that this game is just overall a huge celebration of Spider-Man and his universe that surrounds him. For starters, the game does a tremendous job with its huge roster of A-list Spider-Man villains. You've got Scorpion, Rhino, Venom, The Lizard, Mysterio, Doc Ock, Carnage... And who could forget everybody's favourite, Childhood Trauma. As far as I was concerned, this was a ton of new villains that were really exciting that I just discovered with this game. Personal highlights for me were Venom, who is hilarious in this game, and becomes an ally with Spider-Man with really hilarious results. Like, their character dynamic was really well written, but the villain that seemed to capture my imagination the most was Mysterio. Something about his fishbowl on his head just made him endearing to me. I was pretty much already familiar with Dr. Octopus. I mean, I think everybody knows Dr. Octopus. He's Spider-Man's arch-fucking nemesis. Of course you know Dr. Octopus. And before you guys come at me with, oh, but it's the Green Goblin, not Doc Ock. The Green Goblin being Spider-Man's arch nemesis is more of a fixture of modern times. It came about more with the Ultimate comics, but Doc Ock has had more of that nemesis relationship dynamic with Spider-Man in the earlier runs. So it is up for debate. They're both great villains, I don't really care. But I wasn't just introduced to all these exciting villains, there's also Black Cat who works with Spider-Man, Johnny Storm aka the Human Torch, there are cameos from The Punisher, Daredevil, Captain America. Stan Lee narrates this game. It was through this game that I really got to understand who Stan Lee was. There was just so much in this game that just captured my imagination and led me to go and want to see more. And if that's not all, throughout the game you collect different comic book covers. And these bonuses really excited me as a kid. I loved going through the different comic book covers and seeing where the villains made their first appearances, learning all the little facts about them. It made me just really want to pick up a Spider-Man comic book. As well as that, you've got the different unlockable costumes throughout the game and you can go on a little screen that displays information about them and it just makes made me want to research them. Same goes for the character bio screens as well. There's just so much information in this game that tells you all about Spider-Man's history. And it's done in such a rewarding and exciting way. As a game, this was top notch. This was an excellent licensed game at the time. And by any standards, even today, this is a very fun and enjoyable game. But it really stands out to me as a piece of Spider-Man media that is perfect to show new Spider-Man fans, because it effectively serves as a crash course in Spider-Man's history. Any questions you may have throughout the game's storyline, there are answers to it in the game's extras, which really encouraged me as a young Spider-Man fan to go and seek out different Spider-Man comics and stories. I developed a fascination with Steve Ditko, because I didn't just want to see these characters, I wanted to see their first appearances, I wanted to see their introductions. So the following year for Christmas, my parents got me Essential Spider-Man Volume 1, a comprehensive, chronological bible of all things Spider-Man. Stories upon stories upon stories of Steve Ditko's Spider-Man. From there I started trying to draw these characters, trying to replicate Ditko's style. I fucking sucked at it. I really wish I knew where there were some pictures of the Steve Ditko inspired artwork I did, but I'm pretty sure they're all in the trash by now. But there were a lot of drawings of Spider-Man and Mysterio. But also that same Christmas I received Spider-Man 2 on DVD. And that film I did get to see in the theatre prior. By that point, I already kind of considered myself a Spider-Man fan because of the enthusiasm the game had instilled me with. And I'm not sure if it was that or just the fact that we spend more time with Spider-Man in costume in this one, but I absolutely loved Spider-Man 2. I was obsessed with this film. 
It also speaks volumes about Spider-Man 2 that I am still obsessed with it today. But that's the story of how I became a Spider-Man fan. That PlayStation 1 Spider-Man game was the perfect entry point for kids to get into the Spider-Man series. There's not too much of a learning curve, the difficulty is perfectly balanced and adjustable, it's chock full of information and easter eggs about the character's history, it draws so much inspiration from the comic books, but it also gets me thinking. We now have the freshly re booted Spider-Man PS4, and it's one of the best games I've ever played, but at the same time, it's definitely not as good of a gateway for kids to get into Spider-Man as this game was. The game is definitely more geared up towards adults, and there's more of a learning curve to it, it's definitely not as simple as Spider-Man on the PlayStation 1 was. And the thing is, Spider-Man PS1 was so influential to me going forward, and I can't help but think, should new generations not have access to a game that's like that, that they can just pick up and play and they can learn about Spider-Man? A game that is still a good game and doesn't patronize them, so, you know, not like Spider-Man Friend or Foe was. I'm just saying, I would be so stoked for a remake or a remaster of the original PlayStation 1 Spider-Man game. Obviously that's impossible now that the rights have gone over to Insomniac Games. And obviously I love the new Spider-Man games, these games are perfect for me now that I've grown up. I'm thrilled that more mature Spider-Man fans are being catered to, but when I think of the Spider-Man media that is out there for kids these days, you've got the Marvel Spider-Man TV series, which I, I, I get it, it's a Spider-Man for a new generation, but I don't think it has what makes Spider-Man great in it. I mean, if kids find it entertaining, that's great, that's all it needs to do really. But I wouldn't say it's a good representation of anything Spider-Man related for newcomers. But as I say, I'm not the target audience for that. We are naturally going to be biased towards the products of our own generation. I grew up with Spider-Man PlayStation 1, Sam Raimi Spider-Man films, and the Spectacular Spider-Man TV series, which I was a huge fan of, where I didn't really care for the 90s one. Kids today will be growing up with the Marvel Spider-Man TV series, and possibly the Marvel Spider-Man game if their parents will let them play it, because it is a Peggy 16, and the MCU Spider-Man movies and Spider-Verse movies. I'm not here to complain about what we're getting offered these days. While I don't like the Marvel Spider-Man TV series, I think the rest of it is great. But I do wonder, is there enough being catered towards younger audiences that can really capture their imagination and get them into Spider-Man? Well, I'd be enthusiastic to hear about what got you into Spider-Man. So comment below and discuss, and as always if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, hit subscribe, hit the like button. And for ways of connecting with me, there are links in the description below. And if you're feeling extra supportive, there is a link in the description below to my Patreon and also a Join button. And I'll try and make it worth your while. But of course you don't have to. Thank you so much for watching guys, have a great day.